Well, we can't implement this equation as it's written right now. We can implement the first part, because it's what we had earlier for free space. But now we have this extra term where we subtract a coefficient times ez at one half time step earlier, at n plus a half. But we don't have ez at n plus a half stored in memory. The ezs are only stored at integer time steps in the computer. So what can we do about this? Well, one way to obtain ez at i n plus a half is to take values that are stored in the computer and average them. So we can say this is about equal to ez at n plus one plus ez at n and divide by two. This is what's called a semi-implicit approximation. Using this approximation, we have EZI n plus one is EZI n delta t over epsilon, the difference of the two H fields, And now we have minus delta t over epsilon sigma. And I'm going to go ahead, just write it as is, n over two. So I wanted to write all of this out because I want to ask again, can we implement this equation as it's written here? Well, it turns out we can't yet. And that's because the future value of ez at n plus one appears on the right side of our equation. But that is the value we want to solve for. So we need to take this term and combine it with this one. And similarly, we can take this second ez term and we can combine it with this one. Here I've moved both of the n plus one ez terms to the left, and I haven't quite combined these two yet, but let's go ahead and combine these. So first on the left side we have n plus one, and if I'm gonna combine these two terms, I get one plus delta t over epsilon times sigma, and there's also a two there, so I'll put that right there. And then on the right side we have ez i n and we have one minus delta t over two epsilon sigma. And then we have the rest, which is this subtracting the two h fields. Dividing now the entire equation by this term, we can get an update equation as we had before, easy i n plus one. So here I've go went ahead and divided by this term. You can see both of everything on the right is divided by that term. And now we can take a step back and look at this equation. We can see that in order to account for the conductivity of a material, we really just need to change the coefficients in our easy update equation. So this one we previously defined was CA, but before it was equal to just one. And this one was CB, before it was just DT over epsilon times dx, so we actually accounted for that over here, but just moving that. So now cb is going to be equal to dt over epsilon dx, but also with this extra denominator. All right, so we figured out how to account for sigma in our model. We still need to figure out how to account for sigma star. Here are Maxwell's equations for free space again, or any lossless material. We already accounted for sigma in Ampere's law. We said the curl of H is equal to J plus epsilon DE DT. Now see if you can take the same process we went through for Ampere's law to develop an update equation for EZ, but this time apply the same process to Faraday's law in order to obtain an update equation for H Y. Note that there's a lot of duality in electromagnetics, and just as a current density J can generate circulating magnetic fields, as seen in Ampere's law, 
The analog of that is that a magnetic source, M, can generate circulating electric fields in Faraday's law. And this can be accounted for by adding an M term to Faraday's law. So we have the curl of E is going to be equal to minus M minus mu dH dt. So in Faraday's law here, there's a sign difference on the right side of the equation compared to Ampere's law, and that's because of Lenz's law. By the way, an example M source is a spinning magnet. And just like we said earlier, J is equal to sigma E. Now we can write M is equal to sigma star H. So now take a minute and see if you can develop the update equation for the HY component in the absorbing material region of our model, where there is a non-zero sigma star value. To help you out, I'm going to write here the 1D form of Faraday's law for our Z-polarized wave propagating in free space. So reducing Faraday's law to one dimension for our plane wave, we get DEZ dx is equal to mu dhy dt. So you can apply, first of all, you can take into account this extra m term, and then you can apply central differencing.